was in 1964 the young lawyer to visit your father. Um, we're a little Mississippi summer project, and I know how proud he would be of the extraordinary record you have made. You have done him as well as all of us now. Uh, thank you. And you have been a consistent 100% score on the Children's Defense Fund's Children's Voting Record. And again, I thank you um, for being that perfect student. I just, uh, we will miss you so much. And we are so grateful for all you've done and people have all put in the record and all you've done on children's health and child care. And I believe I could put that, but, but we just, we just love you. You have been with so many of you are sensible and easy to move with you, so thank you. So, all that progress said, we, I think, face extraordinary difficulties with children in America now. They have only one childhood, and that childhood is now. And millions of our children in this nation require emergency attention in this recession last decline. As poverty, including extreme child poverty, hunger, and homelessness have increased to historic levels, irreparable harm is not to be inflicted on them and on our nation's future. I sound like a broken record, but the greatest threat, I believe, to our national security comes from no enemy without it. It comes from our failure <coughs> to protect, invest in, and educate all of our children who make up all of our futures. Children are the foundations of America's future. The foundation is public. You don't say you can't afford to take care of it, and you don't reflect resources for what they need in investment. You give tax cuts to billionaires and billionaires. That defies economic, common, and moral sense. It's a disgrace to children's poorest age group in America, and the younger children are the poorer they are. We rate highest among industrialized countries in relative child poverty, that is unworthy of us, and we rate black in terms of gun violence, protecting our children um, and keeping them safe. Children in America are three times more likely to die from gun violence than American soldiers in Afghanistan. I just think that we need to focus on safety and national security. Within as well as from without. Our nation's schools, many of our nation's schools, public schools are letting all of our children down. A majority of all children in all racial and income groups cannot read or compute at grade level in fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade and have not already dropped out of school. And about half of our minority black young people are not graduating from schools. Worse, and as a black woman and as a mother, the fact that over 80% of black and Hispanic children cannot read or compute at grade level in fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade is um, just beyond um, comprehension. And these children are being sentenced to, to, to social and economic debt. Um, and you've got a, a, a child population, a majority who can't read and write in this globalizing economy. Where's our competitive workforce going to come from? I mean, this is, um, I, 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 I say these things all the time, but I never can believe I'm actually because we are the moral and Achilles in this country. The gap between rich and poor, we've already heard eloquently, is the highest we've ever had. The combined net worth in the United States, 408 billionaires, is almost $1.54 trillion a year. And I can't believe we're sitting here thinking about giving them another tax break. Um, this is more than the combined GDP of 134 countries, with more than a billion people. I looked at the light 2008, because we really need to get our balance straight. So the highest paid American CEO took home over $100 million, which is an amount equal to the salaries of 2,028 elementary school teachers, or 3,827 head start teachers, or 5,274 child <coughs> We need to reset our moral economic compass and to invest. We don't have a money problem. We have a balance problem. It's a final one. We have a priorities problem. And we need to deal with this. Um, I just want to talk about the Cradle Prison Pipeline very briefly. I know I'm being warned with my go light here. Um, and this Cradle Prison Pipeline, which is trapping one in three black boys um, born in 2001, one in six Hispanic boys born in 2001, I'm sorry, both born in 2001, um, is creating a new American apartheid. And prison is the only thing, in fact, the only thing that this country will guarantee every child is a detention or a jail cell after they get in trouble. I can't think of a dumb investment policy. And we really need to reverse course and we guarantee that. And we need to better health care and mental health care and 
quality of the childhood and quality education that, um, um, that we need to we're going to move forward. So we can and must do better. I just want to you know, make a few suggestions, and I'm submitting for the, for the record um, um, some suggestions what we're going to do is we reorganize Title I, uh, invest in more on the childhood. Obviously, the child tax credit and their own income tax credit probably mentioned that they need to be there. But in your national council, in your national council of children, which um, I just heard about, I hope that one of the most important things you can do is figure out how to get the congressional budget office to score prevention as a savings and not as a cost. Because we cannot win, and we can figure out a way to have us quantify how much is saved from Congress and how much not have children who stay in long term care and not have them miss health care. But we can have to quantify prevention because that's the measure we're going to use to, 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 to make our decisions. I hope that the country will take that one on. It will be one of the most important things in the world to set specific goals and have benchmarks to how much we're meeting those goals. Let me just end with a story because I just think. Children are going backwards. And I thought the board would win about seeing our children and grandchildren do better than we do. And it's reversed. And we really do need to deal with that. And we are going to be calling the other black leaders in December with Harry Farmer because we think the black child is the worst crisis since slavery. But black children and Hispanic children and white children are moving backwards. And we really need to try to see if we can reverse this trend, all these trends. I come from Little Rural County in South Carolina. And I just was able to learn a very short story. A black minister called me up and said he just talked to three teenage boys, 12, 13, 14, um, and asked them what I wanted to be when they grew up. And one boy said, I want to work at McDonald's. And the second boy said, I want to be Spider-Man. And when first he couldn't think of a, a, a known profession that he would have in the future, he couldn't <coughs> work in our inner cities and poor rural areas. Um, and work is just not a new focus on jobs for these children and for their parents and for young people. And the third child said that I, he drew, drew a picture on the ground and said, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to be back work because I'm not going to draw it. I'm going to be dead. This is not America's dream. This is not Dr. King's dream. This is not what we're about as a country. And we just need to reach out to say, what is the people? Who are the people? And how do we want to make sure that we prepare our children for the next generation? And we to make sure that our children are free. We have to be strong without the strong child population. Without educated children, the country is not going to be what we need to be in the future. So thank you for what you're doing on our work here. Thank you very, very much. I have constructed the